Hello, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I can't wait to share with you today's technique. I'm going to show you one of the coolest ways to use embossing folders. I am crazy about the results, and I'm hoping that you'll like this technique too. You can do this with any 3D embossing folder you may have, and it's a great way to step things up. We're going to add to the look of dimension that you get with the texture of embossing folders, and all you need is some ink. Now, over the years, I've shown many ways to ink up your embossing folders, but this is a new spin on things. Let's get started with this example here. I actually think the examples of this technique get better and better as the video goes, so I hope you'll stay tuned. For this first one, I'm using a 3D embossing folder from Simon Says Stamps called Fantasy Butterflies. This actually comes with those butterfly dies that allow you to cut butterflies out from that embossing folder background. I'll demonstrate that later. I also have my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine ready to go. You can use whatever machine you have. For these particular embossing folders, I use the platform, a folded piece of cardstock as a shim, and that uh, top white plate. For this technique, we will be applying ink to the raised side. So I'm feeling the inside of the embossing folder and finding where the butterflies are raised. That's the side we're applying ink to. Usually I do the other side, but for this technique, you're applying to whatever is raised. So in this case, the raised butterflies. Over it, I am pressing Honey Bee Metallic Pigment Ink. This is the silver. Any pigment ink would work here. Silver, gold, and white are great options, and I'll demonstrate those in today's video. Now I'm gently run, rubbing it over the surface and then tapping it, trying to get as much ink as I can to the raised surface, but not the areas between. I will lay a piece of cardstock into the embossing folder on the other side, then close the folder onto it, making sure it doesn't shift. Then I'll run it through my die cut machine. Again, I use the platform, a folded piece of cardstock, and that white plate, and then my embossing folder on top. There's nothing on top of the folder. Every machine is different. You might want to experiment with what you have. And look at that. It transfers the, the silver pigment ink into the impression. So we're actually using the back side of this cardstock. The other side has the raised butterflies, but we're using the back side that has the silver pressed into the shapes. Now, if you wanted to, another option would be to just use the embossing folder. And on the raised side here on the cardstock, you can roll some silver pigment ink over it. That's what I've done many times in videos. But I wanna do a comparison between this and the technique I just showed you where we press the ink in on the other side. So here it is if you rub the ink on the top of the raised area, and this is where you press it in. So all those butterflies are indented. And I really like the look of this technique better, the back side of this, because look at all that silver ink set back into the butterflies. So the pink area on this background is what's raised. I love the look of this, I love the texture. You could leave it as is, but I'm gonna step it up a bit. I will be applying with a Brer, Simon Says Stamp Saturated Ink. Any dye ink will work. I find this ink works really well. Now I'm applying over the raised area, which is that pink background around the butterflies. I'm applying a Sweets color, which matches my background cardstock. So it's just gonna make it darker in the raised area. So what's indented here is will stay silver or that regular pink cardstock color that we started with. And look at how that just adds so much to it. You have so much look of dimension, even more than what the regular embossing folder does on its own. So again, the raised area is that pink where we just applied the dark pink ink. And then the indented area or the valleys is the butterfly with all that texture and some silver shine. Now I trimmed that down and added it to a white top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I also have a Simon Says Stamp Fancy Hello die cut here. I cut the shadow from white cardstock and then the word hello itself from white cardstock and silver glitter cardstock and glued that together for a stacked look. Now I also wanted to add these little butterflies, these white butterflies. And I don't know if you can tell in the photo there, but these butterflies have texture to them thanks to the embossing folder. I showed you earlier that this butterfly embossing folder actually comes with dies, and I'll be using those die cuts that I created from white cardstock. 
and I put a little piece of tape on the back of my little butterfly die cut. Then I open up my embossing folder and I tape this in to line up with one of the small butterflies of the same size and shape in the embossing folder and that little piece of tape will hold it in place. I'll grab another of the small butterfly die cuts, put some tape on that, line it up with another of the small butterflies in the embossing folder pattern. And once I have those taped in place, I'll run this through my die cut machine. This will add that texture to those butterflies. So whenever you use these dies that coordinate with a folder, I do recommend die cutting first, then using the folder so you don't flatten it if you do it the other way. So check out that fun texture we've added to those simple white die cuts. Now I did die cut a few additional white butterflies. I didn't use the folder on those, but they're getting glued behind the uh, butterfly that we used the embossing folder on. It's just to give it some dimension. You could skip that if you want. I'm also trimming one of the little bodies of the butterfly down to better fit this smaller butterfly size. And then the other butterfly that I created, I cut in half. So it looks like a butterfly landing from the left and a butterfly landing from the right. So now we have these three butterflies to add to our card. I added the sentiment and these butterflies with a strong liquid adhesive. This is Gina K Connect in a fine tip bottle, and I know that will hold nicely. Now I'm not really adding a whole lot to this. I'm adding mostly white cardstock and some silver glitter cardstock, but I really wanted that simple look and allow the background to show. I also grabbed a, an envelope that matches my background and I'm using the embossing folder on the flap of the envelope. Now most die cut machines will let you put your embossing folder in sideways like this, which allows you to do the embossing folder just on the flap. This is a great way to make your envelope match your card perfectly. So let's take a closer look at the completed card. I wish you could see the shine and texture and dimension that this background has. I hope the video picks it up a bit. Again, you could use white pigment ink here, but there's something about that soft silver shine inside of those butterflies. And I feel like we pick up that silver by adding the silver glitter sentiment. All right, let's do another example. I think this one even better demonstrates this technique and the beautiful results you can get. Now for this, I'm using another new embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp. It's a 3D embossing folder called Floral Clusters, and it also comes with these two dies so you can cut the th one, those three flowers out. I won't actually be using those dies today, only the embossing folder. Now again, this is a technique that you can use with a variety of embossing folders. I do think 3D folders are the best, but those are very common on the market right now. All right, so I'm using Honey Bee Silver Metallic Ink once again, and I am kind of swiping it over the raised areas only, and then dabbing it. You wanna get as much ink as you can to the raised areas. Now you'll notice there's a lot of background on this, on those three kind of empty spots. I wanna make sure I don't get any ink there so I get crisp results. If you get a little ink in that background, just wipe it away with a dry cloth or your finger. All right, you can see there's a good amount of silver ink on there, so I'm placing a piece of blue cardstock in it. I do think this is most impactful with a darker color of cardstock, but if you want something more subtle, you could definitely use a lighter color. I will then run that through my die cut machine and look at the beautiful transfer of ink. Now again, this is the backside or what we normally think of as the backside of an embossing folder background, but I think it's gorgeous. This is what we're normally used to seeing, right? But look at that, where that silver is pressed in, beautiful texture, beautiful shine. Now again, I'm gonna step this up, you can leave it as is, but I thought I would apply a darker blue ink over the raised areas, just to make it stand out more. I'm using my Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat just to hold it in place, and I have Simon Says Stamp Saturated Ink in the marine color, which is one of my favorites. Now this is actually not a darker color, it's about the same color as the background, or maybe even lighter. But when I'm putting quite a bit of it on with a brayer, you'll see it makes the background, the raised area, the area around the flowers, a little bit darker looking. It's kind of like a watermark look. And that really just adds to the depth of this because now everything around the flowers is that darker blue and what's pressed in the flowers themselves have silver in their original blue cardstock color. And I just think it's gorgeous. 
this is one of those techniques that I find very easy to do, and it really stretches your supplies. And I think I, I actually, I, I think it's safe to say this is definitely my favorite embossing folder technique now. So I'm adding a sentiment on here. Again, I used white cardstock and silver glitter cardstock. It's a Simon Says Stamp handwritten hello. I use that one a lot. And then I also have these memory box uh, butterfly dies. They create different size butterflies with different details on them and the little bodies for them. So I am choosing three of them to go on here. I did not layer these die cuts. Instead, I'm putting a big blob of glue on the back of them and a little bit of a fold to them so the wings stick up a bit. When that big glob of glue behind the butterflies dries, it'll keep those butterfly wings propped up a bit. It really makes a big difference and is a great way to add a fun accent to this card. All right, so now I have my embossing folder, the same one, and a silver metallic envelope. This one's from Simon Says Stamp. I use this silver quite often. It's got like a brush silver look to it. I'll put the flap of it into the embossing folder, run it through my die cut machine, and now my folder matches my card. And I think it's a great way to pull everything together. And believe it or not, this is one of those cards that looks like it took a long time, but it was pretty quick to pull together. And I made sure a lot of that background shows here. You've got that depth, you've got the silver shine, you've got all that texture. It's really such a fun look in real life. Okay, time for another example. I think this one might be my favorite of all the backgrounds. I think you'll love it. For this, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Dahlia Delights embossing folder. Again, it does come with three dies to cut out some of those flowers, but I'm skipping those dies today. I am taking the side of the embossing folder that has the raised pattern, so where the flowers are raised. That's important. Always go for the raised pattern side. I'm applying silver pigment ink to it. You could use white, as I mentioned, or even gold, which I'll demonstrate later. I'm placing a piece of cardstock in there. Again, darker is probably best if you really want it to stand out. If you want something subtle, go for a lighter color. And look at this, after running it through my die cut machine, gorgeous results, lots of texture, lots of subtle shine. Now I do want to do another comparison. Remember this is on the back side of what we normally think of, of a background with an embossing folder. I flipped it over and this is where the flowers are raised here. I am rubbing silver ink over that. This is the technique I normally do with embossing folder backgrounds. But look at comparison. It's very different, the look that you get. Both are beautiful but I feel like you pull out more of the detail with this technique where we put the ink in the embossing folder and then pressed it into the background. Now to make it stand out even more, I have Simon Says Stamp Ocean Saturated Ink and I'm using my brayer to roll that over the top very gently and that applies ink only to the raised areas on this, which is the opposite. It's like the background. So the flowers are pressed into the cardstock, leaving the original cardstock color and silver ink behind. And then we just applied a darker ocean color over all of the background area. So this will be a reverse. I just want to make sure that's uh, understandable that this is a reverse. These flowers are pressed into the cardstock and it looks amazing. Now on top of this, I'm using a new layering die set from Birch Press called Canopy Layer Dies. There are three background dies that can be used together or separately. Now I'm only using two of them today, the two die cuts that you see layered here together. I love the look of that. There is a third background which added some more leaves to it so you can have this beautiful kind of forest look. There are also the dies that you see at the top of the screen which create little berries, little layered berries that you can add to the branches. I'm skipping that third die cut and the berries because I want to allow more of my background to show in between these branches. So I only did the two die cuts only and it gives me a fun layered branch and leaf look, but there still is plenty of open space. Now there are these little pieces that kind of stick off to attach those berries. I'm skipping those and I wanna make more room, so I'm trimming those off. It's always okay to give your die cuts a little haircut to change their look. 
All right, so I glued that on top of our background. And for a sentiment, I'm using the Birch Press Big Hello Sugar Script die set. This is an oldie but goodie that I use often. I die cut the top hello from a dark teal cardstock, and I'm covering it with tonic aqua shimmer pen, which adds some sparkle and makes the cardstock a bit darker. I then am covering that with Ranger Glossy Accents, so it'll stand out even more, have a little bit of dimension, and lots of shine. And I added nothing else to this. I wanted that background to show through. I did use the embossing folder on the flap of my matching envelope, and I feel like that steps it up a bit too. So here's a closer look at that background. I am crazy about that. I think it's because the color I put on top was even darker than the original color of cardstock. So it just creates more dimension on that background. Now you may notice my L and O are kind of messed up. I had set something on top of this while the glossy accents was still wet. Didn't realize it, so it kind of messed them up. So I will redo that hello, but I didn't have time to redo it and let it dry before um, ending this video, so I'll do that later on. All right, let's do another example. This time I'm doing a strawberry themed card, just demonstrating how this works with a variety of embossing folders. So this is the Simon Says Stamp Strawberry Fields embossing folder. It does come with three dies to cut out strawberries, but I'm sticking with the embossing folder today only. I am adding gold pigment ink to the raised areas inside of the embossing folder. So the side where the strawberries and flowers are raised. I then will close that onto a piece of dark green cardstock, making sure it doesn't shift. And I'll run that through my die cut machine. And this is the beautiful result. You get that gold pressed into the strawberries and a little bit of a gold haze on the leaves. Now over this, I'm applying Simon Says Stamp Pine ink, and this will make for a really dark background. So my leaves appear a little bit of a lighter green and has that gold shine to it, and the strawberries have a lot of that gold shine. Gorgeous results, I liked it so much, I ended up doing two backgrounds. Now for a sentiment on this card, I used one from the Hero Arts Color Layering Cherry Stamp Set. By the way, this is a great layering set, but today I'm only using the sentiment that says, that was very sweet of you. So I stamped that sentiment onto a large white cardstock strip with black ink, and I matted it with some gold cardstock kind of sticking out the top. I trimmed my background down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And I'll add the strip right towards the bottom. I'm also creating some little layered strawberries using the Spellbinders strawberry die set. I did the first layer of the strawberries with gold cardstock, the second layer with red. So the gold shows through the little holes on the red strawberries. I also added two shades of green for the leaves and a few gold dots, little enamel dots, so that I could have a little bit more of that sparkle. Now here's a closer look at the final result. I love that dark background where the background is darker and raised and the strawberries and leaves are pressed in and have the lighter and gold color. Okay, last but not least, I have two really impactful backgrounds. So I have a pair of cards and I did them a little bit differently than the other techniques. So we're gonna step it up just a bit. So I'm using that same Dahlia embossing folder that I used before, and I'm pressing the silver pigment ink directly into the embossing folder on the side where the flowers are raised. So you can feel that there's texture to those flowers inside of the folder. After I applied the silver pigment ink, I'm using a brayer to apply gold pigment ink right on top. The brayer will only reach the topmost points, so it only adds to some of the area. So now we have silver and gold ink inside of that folder. I'll put a piece of cardstock in there, carefully fold it, put it through my die cut machine, and look at this. We have lots of silver ink pressed into those flowers and a little bit of gold at the center of those flowers because that was the most raised area inside of the embossing folder. Now let's do a comparison. I have another background here I did off screen, the one on the left. I just did gold pigment ink alone inside of the folder. The one on the right, I did the silver pigment ink and then the gold on the raised areas and you get that two-tone effect. Now let's do the reverse. On this one, I'm putting gold pigment ink onto the raised flowers inside of the folder, then rolling over that some silver pigment ink. With 3D embossing folders, only uh, you know there's different depth to it. So they're only the topmost pokey parts of this flower and the folder will grab that grab that silver ink. 
So I'll use the same color of cardstock and I will put that into my embossing folder carefully, making sure it doesn't shift run that through my die cut machine. And now we have a different look. This time we have a lot of gold pressed into those flowers and just silver in those areas kind of at the center of the flowers that were the most raised inside of the embossing folder. Now let's do a comparison between those two. The one on the left is where we did silver first, then a little bit of gold. The one on the right is where we did gold first and a little bit of silver. So you just get two different looks. Both are gorgeous. And we're going to step both of them up. So I am taking some Simon Says Stamp Saturated Ink. This is the royal color, beautiful royal blue color. And I'm rolling that over our background. It will just grab onto the parts of the cardstock that are the most raised, which happens to be the background. So the flowers are pressed in, those are deeper. And look at that contrast we get. I am crazy about this look. I wish you could see it in real life. It's really one of those that you can do on a card pretty quickly and then keep the rest of the card very simple. I am so in love with this technique. I hope you will give it a try. Now to finish these cards off, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Bountiful Sunflower Bloom die set. That's the big one. And then there is the smaller one called the Little Sunflower Blooms. Now these give beautiful results. I thought I was going to use one of the small ones. You see me putting it together here, but I decided not to use them on today's cards. So I'll just put it in the drawer and save it for later. Now in the video, it looks like I'm using a yellow cardstock, but this is actually a brushed gold cardstock. It just has a little uh, shine to it. It's not metallic. And it kind of picks up that gold ink that we used in the background. So I created the large sunflowers out of completely, completely out of gold cardstock, that brushed gold cardstock. I did trim both backgrounds down and added them to four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note cards. And then I put the flower on the top left on one card and on the bottom right on the other and added a Simon Says Stamp handwritten thanks layered die cut. Now this is the one where we did gold first, then a little bit of silver pigment ink on top of that. I did also add a few silver gemstones just for sparkle. Now this version here, this one is where we put the silver pigment ink down first, then a little bit of gold on top with the brayer. Both of these look great, and it just shows you the different looks you can get by using different inks inside of the embossing folder. Now you definitely could use other inks for this technique, but I do find that pigment inks are very forgiving because they sit nicely on the inside of the embossing folder and transfer nicely. So I would give this a try with any of your pigment inks, white, silver, gold, or colored. Before I go, I wanted to show you a few other embossing folders that I think would work well for this technique. These are all new from Simon Says Stamp. Now any 3D embossing folder would work great. You can get a good, pretty good results with a regular embossing folder too. Just try what you have on hand. But I do think these florals would be excellent to try with those silver and gold metallic inks. And by the way, I used Honey Bee silver and gold metallic ink today, but any uh, brand should work great for this. All right, there you have it. A really fun new technique using embossing folders. I really hope you'll give this a try. I will link below to the supplies that I used. And at the end here, I'll link to a couple other embossing folder techniques that you can also try if you have a chance. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon and have a great week.